topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm a friend. Good day. My name is James Robertson. I'm a researcher publisher and teacher regarding the matters and truths of the Almighty Creator, whose true name is Yah the Eternally Self-Existing. I've been actively serving Him since 1993, over 31 years. And the truth is that the Almighty Creator desires a deep personal relationship with you. If you're not actively serving Yah, then by default you're serving Satan. My objective is to show you how you can make a big difference on earth and qualify for a position of high esteem in heaven for eternity. It's important to understand that as a believer, just being good is not the point. It's relationship with Yah that counts. Without this, you will be in a very unpleasant place in heaven with no way out. My aim is to show you how to get close. If you're a good person without a clear relationship with Yah, then you're in a spiritual no-man's land and will not enter heaven when you die. The Creator has said regarding unbelievers, why would I want someone to spend eternity with me when they do not believe I exist? God is calling everybody on the planet to be involved and serve Him and help Him to have victory over Satan. My goal is to show you how to do this. Fundamentally, we each need to learn to see things on earth from Yah's perspective, and my aim is to teach you how to do this. Fundamentally, then please visit my website at www.endtimeissueministries.org, that's endtimeissueministries, one word, dot org, or email me on james, J-A-M-E-S, at endtimeissueministries.org. Today we're going to continue with part two of my Discussion of the ETI Bible version, the introduction to the writings from Matiyahu to Revelation. This is part two. The overview. Nearly all translations of the so-called New Testament from Matiyahu, Matthew to Revelation contain major errors with regard to key words and concepts. I'm in the process of producing a rendering of these books that corrects all the errors that I know of together with providing commentary on what I've learned. This broadcast continues to share the introduction that I've produced for this rendering, discussing all the major errors that have been corrected. We will continue discussion of the background to my rendering of the so-called New Testament. We'll look at the rationale for the ETI version. We'll then note that the base manuscript for the ETI version is the King James Version. We will speak of the reader's dilemma of past experience and note that the essence of existence is to seek a deep personal relationship with the Almighty Creator. We'll then discuss the Lord, a huge error in the New Testament, Yah the eternally self-existing versus Adonai, Jesus, man or God. We'll then consider the law, a source of major confusion. And finally, we'll look at the state of your relationship with the Almighty Creator. So we're continuing with the introduction to the writings from Matiyahu to Revelation, that's Matthew to Revelation. Nearly all translations of the so-called New Testament from Matiyahu to Revelation contain major errors with regard to key words and concepts. I'm in the process of producing a rendering of these books that corrects all the errors I know of, together with providing commentary on what I've learned. This broadcast continues to share the introduction that I've produced for this rendering, discussing all the major errors that have been corrected. 
to start with a few comments based on feedback on the first broadcast to be absolutely clear the bible is an important history book but where the na true name of the creator is lost it constitutes 80 percent of the translation that constitutes 20 percent of the value so I say again the bible is an important book i wouldn't be spending hundreds of hours translating it if I didn't think it was important. And then also to be clear, I'm correcting the most fundamental errors of translation. And that does not alter the fact. The Bible is not the word of God. There's, there's this mistaken impression that because the Bible is the word of God and therefore an idol, that somehow it's hugely more valuable. That's not so. It's a useful, fairly reliable history book. Don't take away from it. It's written by normal human beings who had some experience of the divine. The rationale for the ETI version. I've been seeking to draw close to the Almighty Creator since the 12th of March, 1993, when he spoke to me audibly and I knew that he was real. In the ensuing years, I've had numerous supernatural and other experiences that have reinforced my deep certainty that he exists. In the year 2000, I went on a series of three-day water-only fasts, seeking truth, and started to get revelation on all sorts of factors, of which the most important was that the name, true name of the Almighty Creator is Yah, frequently translated, literated as Yahweh, or more accurately, Yahweh. That's Y-A-H-W-E-H, -E or more accurately, Y-A-H-O-O-E-H. -E These two forms of the Hebrew phrase, Y-H-W-H, -H, constitute the reality that the true name of the Almighty is Yah, Y-A-H, as in Yah, the eternally self-existing, which is the true meaning of Yahweh. See the true name of the Creator is Yah, the eternally self-existing, on the website. Folks, if you don't know somebody's name, how do you have a deep personal relationship with that person? If you don't know the creator's true name, how do you even begin to profess to seeking a relationship with him, certainly a deep relationship? And then it turns out that the name Yah is embedded in dozens of Hebrew names, probably about a hundred in the whole book, including those cited previously, of which Yahushua, meaning Yah is salvation, is the most significant. This is the correct name of the man commonly referred to as Jesus. This is totally concealed in the vast majority of English translations and renderings and is responsible for major errors in doctrine. A key objective of the ETI version is to make these names visible. And in the so-called Old Testament, Yahushua is translated as Joshua. So it's a bit closer, but it's still off the mark. Countering this, the phrase Yahweh is almost universally translated as the Lord over 6,000 times in the standard English translations of the Old Testament and incomparable derivatives in other language, which have been informed by the English translations. The Lord is an accurate translation of Baal, a pagan that is demonic deity. It's an offense to call Yah the Lord, and this should be avoided at all costs. Folks, just because people have got away with it in the past, the dispensation has changed. Father's well, had enough. He doesn't want to be called the Lord. He wants to be called Yah the eternally self-existing, or just Yah, or the Almighty. Or father, but not the Lord. Lord is a pagan, abominable name that he allowed to be used because of the level of deception and error way back in the Dark Ages. Since Yeshua, Yahushua, is repeatedly referred to as the Lord in the New Testament, correctly Adonai, the Hebrew, there's confusion that the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, of the Old Testament, 
or Yahweh, Yahweh, equals the Lord of the New Testament, and therefore Jesus is God, which is completely false. This is compounded in the New Testament because the same Greek word, Kyrio, K-Y-R-I-O-U, is used for both Yah and Yeshua. So that's in the Greek. And so that deception and that error was there in the Greek and it's been carried forward. The thing to realize is that those books were not written in Greek. They were written in Aramaic and translated, and translators corrupted things. Then the English word Christ relates to at least three different Greek derivatives of Christu, which have distinctly different meanings, as in Yahushua, the anointed one of Yah, incorrectly Jesus Christ, or the anointing of Yah that was upon Yeshua, incorrectly Christ Jesus, and Christ, the anointed one of Yah, or an, or an anointed one of Yah. Christ applies to any believer who is anointed that is filled with the Spirit of the Creator. So I can correctly call myself James Christ. Christ is therefore a meaningless Christian term that should be avoided. Since Christ primarily refers to Yah and not to Jesus, this leads to massive confusion and is another factor in the mistaken belief that Jesus is God, derived from the erroneous belief that Jesus equals Christ, and that both words can be used interchangeably to describe the man. This leads to the mistaken belief that Christianity is the religion of belief in Jesus, when in fact the correct translation would be the religion of the anointed ones of Yah, and should relate to relationship with the Almighty Creator. The Hebrew word Elohim in the writings from Bereshith or Genesis to Malachi, Malachi, means mighty one, capital letters, capital first letters, or mighty one lowercase, or almighty, depending on context. In all cases, it is translated as God, capital G, or God, lowercase g. God is the name of a pagan that is a demonic deity, and it is an insult to refer to the almighty as God. This word should be avoided at all times and replaced with the appropriate rendering given above. So, if you're going to not call Yah by his name Yah, then call him the Almighty, or my Mighty One. But understand that there are, that Mighty One, Elohim, applies to any Mighty One, including the King, the President, the Prime Minister, the billionaire, businessman, woman, whatever. Elohim does not specifically refer to Yah. There are derivatives of Elohim, Eli and El, which are terms of endearment. So Eli is correctly translated, my beloved mighty one, or my beloved Yah, or Yah is my beloved, Eli, my beloved. So there's a, a level of tenderness towards Yah that is contained in the Bible that in about a hundred names that is completely lost in the English. In the New Testament, the Greek word theos, Strong's 2316, is used to the tune of 2,316 times to represent Yah, the Almighty and other Mighty Ones, and translated almost universally as God. For the same reason God should be avoided at all times, and Yah has been used in my translation to represent Theos, capital T, in this version. There's great confusion in the New Testament regarding God. This is a major error. Yah is completely missing, except obliquely through the Lord, as discussed above. The original King James Version text is God, which occurs 1,267 times in the New Testament. This is Greek, theos, in most instances, which can refer to Yah, or not as the case may be. Strictly, it could be argued that the translation of theos is the Almighty, but since there's no reference to Yah in the Greek texts, although clearly implied in most cases, I've chosen to substitute theos as Yah and adjust when necessary. Note also that God can be translated Mighty One, and God can be translated Mighty One. 
So Satan is a god, Satan is a mighty one. The angels, messengers of Satan are mighty ones. The messengers of Yah are mighty ones. They're all gods. If you want to use the word God, it's an abomination, don't do it. And then the Hebrew El and Eli, which I mentioned a minute ago, specifically relate to the Almighty, are also generally translated God, where Eli or Eli, as in Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabatani, Yeshua speaking as he's about to die in Matiyahu 2746, actually means my darling mighty one or my beloved mighty one, relating specifically to Father Yah. So as, as he's dying, Yeshua basically says, my darling, my darling, why have you forsaken me? It's tragic, it's emotional, and it's lost in the English. Then the Hebrew word translated holy is Kodesh or Kadosh in the Hebrew, meaning set apart, separated, sanctified. It is a state of being of one who is committed to the Almighty. The set apart, incorrectly, Holy Spirit is the portion of the Spirit of Yah set apart to indwell believers as opposed to the universal spirit of Yah, which permeates the entire universe and holds it together, including indwelling unbelievers. In him we live and move and have our being, Acts 17.28, Shaul Paul speaking to the people on the Areopagus in Athens. The set-apart spirit of Yah is given in two measures, a betrothal measure, given when any person comes to a revelation of the existence of the Creator, and a marriage measure when a person makes a deep commitment to Yah and receives the impartation, the anointing of the Spirit of Yah, whether by laying on of hands, immersion, or direct request, Father, please fill me with your Spirit. The Greek word translated cross is staros, meaning a stake, a length of tree trunk. Cross is a pagan, that is, demonic and blasphemous word. It is an insult to say that Yeshua died on a cross. There are numerous other second-order issues that will be dealt with in the footnotes to the Bible that follow. In the long journey that I've been on relating to understanding the points above and many other points, it became apparent to me there was a need for a new version. I've consulted numerous versions but not found a single Bible that addresses all of my points here. The closest I've come is the version called the Scriptures from the Institute of Scripture Research. Uh, www.isr-messianic.org which is also available on Amazon and other websites. It's also available in the eSword Bible Study software at www.e-sword.net. This is the most accurate translation that I've encountered but nevertheless slips up on some of the points noted above, particularly regarding Messiah as Christ and therefore Yeshua, Jesus, as uh, some fashion, yeah. I've made extensive reference to this version with regard to the correct English rendering of Hebrew names and words, although I've deviated on some important points, as I said, particularly with regard to Messiah versus Anointed One of Yah. Notwithstanding this, I recommend the Scriptures as another version that is worth reading. Folks, there are innumerable English translations, easily over a hundred, that have different nuances to them. And you can learn quite a bit by reading the King James, the Amplified, the Scriptures, and my version. I'm not sure that you should read the other three first. I think maybe you should read mine first, but there's still a way to go with that. I'm, uh, just done one Thessalonians. So I've still got the balance of, of the New Testament to do. And then I, I've done a, a global replace on both the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, something like 6,000 instances of Yah in the New Testament. And I think it's 11,000 instances of Yah in the Old Testament, which gives you a completely different understanding of the Bible and the history that it's about. It's important to understand that I've converted all names of people and places to Hebrew based on the scriptures and other sources. On the basis that Yeshua was a Hebrew and spoke Hebrew and Aramaic, 
And the New Testament is fundamentally based on Hebrew culture and teaching. The Amplified Bible from Zondervan, available from Amazon and elsewhere, is also a useful translation from a different perspective, and it's also recommended. It addresses issues relating to the more wide-ranging meaning of Hebrew and Greek words that are constrained in English. So I, I like the Amplified because it amplifies. The Hebrew and, the, and even the Greek are richer, there's more in-depth meaning to the words, and the Amplifier explodes that and, and makes it visible. So it's well worth getting a copy of the Amplified and reading it. But at <laughs> the risk of sounding biased, I would suggest you read mine first and get my commentary. Uh, because the my, my translation is based on the King James. So it's not the best translation to start with. But as I've said earlier, the... English translations concentrate on the 80% of the text, which is 20% of the value. I've concentrated on the 20% of the text, which is 80% of the value, maybe even 10% of the text that's 90% of the value. Because if you don't know the name Yah and how that permeates the history of believers, you're going to miss a key point of the value of reading your Bible. So I said this a moment ago, the base manuscript for the ETI version is the King James Version. The Bible version that uh, I will present shortly is based on the King James Version, the KJV. My reason for doing this is firstly that it is not subject to copyright and therefore not liable to sanction if someone disagrees with my rendering. Secondly, the KJV is the foundation on which a vast amount of Bible research and study is based and the foundation for many concordances, such as Strong's Concordance, dictionaries, interlinear Bibles, etc. So it's, it's a good foundation. The, the uh, English is a little bit old world, but just look past that. Throughout this version, I've replaced common English words with the best Hebrew transliterations that I can locate. I'd ideally have preferred to do this based on the Amplified Bible from Sondervan, but copyright issues prevent that. I've come to see that using other people's material that you think is val that I think is valuable, but which they perceive as transgressing their copyright, is just a self-defeating situation. Because sooner or later, when they discover they disagree with me on any number of things, they embargo the use of their materials. So in this case, I decided not even to try. So because it's King James Version, the English is a bit oldie-worldie. But I ask you to look past that at the core issues that I'm seeking to raise with this version, which is around the name of Yah and Eli and the anointing of the Spirit of Yah, fundamentals that I've just been talking about. As discussed a moment ago, I've drawn extensively on the scriptures from the Institute of Scripture Research and then various versions of the Bible in the eSword software, www.esword.net. Also, my own report on my research back in the early 2000s as reported in 2010-1102, the true names of the Almighty in the Bible, detailed analysis, which is on the web page, uh, name of Yah in the book, look on the table of contents. I've also made use of Google searches and I made use of the Bible Hub website at www.biblehub.com, particularly with regard to the interlinear Bible and dictionary searches. Finally, in some cases, I've applied my own interpretation based on things I've been shown by Yah. Most notably, while some versions refer to Yahuwah and others to Yahweh, I've chosen Yahweh and in specific cases Yahu rather than Yahu with a U on the basis that since the satanic and demonic realm have seen fit to mock the Almighty through www.yahoo.com website, then Yahoo has to be the most accurate form. You know, if the if the forces of darkness are taking off Yah, 
and trying to insult him with a um, a name that is close to his, then that's probably the truth, folks. It's an insult to have a yahoo.com email address. It truly is. Father doesn't appreciate it. If you love him, get rid of the email address. It may take you a few months to phase it out and replace it with Gmail or whatever, but you need to get out of yahoo.com. The reader's dilemma of past experience in considering the position that I suppose relative to the traditional words you may ask the question, I've used these words all my life and had significant experiences of the Almighty while using them. How then can you say they're a pagan and in error? Or similar questions. The answer is that Revelation 21, 20 verses 1 to 3 required for Satan to be cast into the pit for a thousand years. In order for this to be legally possible in the court of heaven, it was necessary for all grace with regard to wrong words and wrong doctrine, all of which are lies of Satan, to be withdrawn. Satan was cast into the pit for a thousand years in May 2003. See the article 2010-0907-B, Satan sentenced to 1,000 years in the pit on the 3rd of May 2003. On the web page, Satan to the pit 2003. Thus, the interpretation based in this version is absolutely critical relative to service to the Almighty post-2003, albeit that some level of grace still applies to those who had a material relationship prior to 2003. But as a general principle, folks, there is no more grace for calling Father the Lord, L-O-R-D capitals, or God, and calling Jesus Yeshua, uh, calling Yeshua Jesus, and equating Christ with Jesus, and saying that Jesus is God, saying that the Bible is the Word of God, they're all appalling sins, folks. I've talked at length about them. There's plenty of material on the website to explain why I say what I've just said, that the grace has been withdrawn. So, to sum it all up, the essence of existence is to seek a deep personal relationship with the Almighty Creator. Fundamentally, the reason the universe, the solar system, this planet, the plants, the animals, and human beings exist is so that the Almighty Creator can have friends that he can have constructive relationships with, discuss things with, experiment with, things that can invent things and enjoy life. If you are not in a position where you have a deep personal relationship with Yah, you're failing in your life purpose. See the article, Yah the Creator desires to have deep personal relationships with people who become his friends. On the webpage, Creator desires friends. I encourage you to set out on this journey today. There is much on the website to help you and you're welcome to contact me for assistance. This Bible version is intended to help you position your thinking appropriately. Note that this fact has been almost totally lost and the world is massively corrupt as a result of the rebellion of Satan, previously known as Hillel, who tricked Adam into submission such that Satan, the accuser of the brethren, is now the mighty one, the God of this world, the Elohim of this world. See the web page, Our World Today History, The Real Facts, uh, Our World Today History, on the website. Folks, fundamentally, all of this exists for one reason only, to create an environment for super-intelligent beings with the ability to take decisions and make choices to choose to become friends with the Creator. If you are living today and you are not actively seeking to become a friend of the Creator, I have to tell you, your life is a complete and utter waste of time. 
So then the Lord, a huge error in the New Testament. You are the eternally self-existing versus Adonai, Jesus, man or God. In this section, I want to address a huge error in the so-called New Testament. I've touched on this already. Consider Matiyahu 22.37, which in the King James reads, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Referring to the Interlinear Bible at biblehub.com, Interlinear Matthew 22.37, we find that the Greek word translated the Lord is Kyrion. Strong's Greek number 2962. However, this verse is quoting Debarim, incorrectly Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Referring to the interlinear Bible, we find that the Hebrew phrase translated Lord is transliterated as Yahweh. Strong's Hebrew number 3068, which is stated elsewhere is more accurately Yahweh, and which accurately translates as Yah, the eternally self-existing. So apparently Kirion equals Yahweh equals Yah, the eternally self-existing, but there's a catch there. That verse actually reads, Hear, O Israel, Yah, the eternally self-existing, our mighty one, is one Yah. And thou shalt love Yah, the eternally self-existing, thy mighty one, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. However, we consider James 1.1, 1, 1, which in the King James Version reads, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. We find in the interlinear Bible that the Lord also translates as Kyria, Strong's 2962. So again, it appears that we have Yah Yahuwah Jesus Christ, Yahuwah Jesus Christ. In other words, that this indicates that Jesus is God, which is the common Christian understanding and conventional wisdom. However, correcting the inaccuracies in translation discussed elsewhere, Lord Jesus Christ then translates to Yah the eternally self existing Yahushua, the anointed of Yah. Which is Yahushua means Yah is salvation. In fact, that's Yah the eternally self existing, Yah is salvation, the anointed of Yah, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Even if one punctuates it to try and improve the reading, fundamentally, Yah cannot anoint himself. The anointing is Yah. This is so important to understand, folks. The spirit of Yah on a human being, the anointing is what enables that human being to hear Yah, to speak for Yah, to perform miracles, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to walk on water. Virtually nobody understands that today. Nobody understands the context of it today. And virtually nobody aspires to do most of that today. And if they do, they think it's for somebody else. That's not right. You can have the spirit of Yah in you more than any other human being that's ever lived if you choose to do the hard work to get there. In alternatively, Strong's Concordance, BibleHub.com, Hebrew 136, reports Strong's number 136, Adonai, as also translating Lord in 456, 456 locations in the Old Testament where Ed where Adonai applies to human lords. This is clouded by a Jewish convention that replaces Yahweh with Adonai in the Old Testament because of a false teaching that one should not utter or write the true name of the Almighty, Yahweh or Yah, in case one inadvertently breaks the third commandment and takes his name in vain. This is the origin of the Lord era in the Old Testament. In stark contrast to that, Yah has said to me, if you love me, you will call me by my true name, Yah. Think about it. His name is Yah, or if you like, Yahweh. 
which is more of an insult, to mispronounce that or to call him God or the Lord? We're both are pagan names. I have to say to you that if after listening to this, you continue to call the almighty creator of the heavens and the earth anything other than Yah and the almighty or the creator, you will be judged. Things will go wrong in your life. don't know how to make it more clear. He hates those names. Please don't use them. So we find an alternative translation of Lord Jesus Christ, which is Adonai Yahushua, the anointed of Yah, which clearly indicates that Yahushua is distinct from Yah and is a human being. This interpretation is applied throughout the ETI version and has been approved by Yah. I leave it to the reader to assess whether the substitutions I've made make sense or whether the conventional belief that Jesus is God is actually true. This is a very serious choice to make. If you believe that Jesus is God and you are mistaken, you're breaking the first commandment that you'll have no other mighty ones but Yah, and you will spend time in hell when you die. Remember that I assert that this error is embedded in the Greek source manuscripts and that is a major reason by my decision to produce the ETI version. I've thought about doing what I'm doing now in terms of the ETI version, probably from back to about two thousand and two, two thousand and three when I wrote that very detailed article, it's, I don't know, 70 pages or something, on the name of Yah in the Bible, where I lifted out as many names that include Yah as I could, so like Yahushua, Yah is salvation, Yahuchanan, Yah has graced, and so on and so on and so forth. Eliah, my, Yah is my beloved mighty one. As you make these corrections, the Bible comes alive at a level that is completely missing in the conventional English translations. I want to move on and then discuss the law, which is another source of major confusion. Another area of inexact rendering in the New Testament of the King James Version, and in fact just about all versions, is the word law. The same word is used for the law equals the Ten Commandments cited in this version as is law, capital L-A-W, Ten Commandments. Through careful examination of context, it is apparent that in some cases law refers to the Ten Commandments. This is the law of which Yeshua says, not one jot or tittle of the law shall pass away. Matiyahu 5.18 Note that the Ten Commandments were written in stone by the finger of Yah, and will never pass away. They are cast in stone. I'll touch on the other variants of the word law in a moment, but this is so important, folks. There's a huge distinction between those Ten Commandments that Yah wrote with his finger in tablets of stone that absolutely do not change. So when Yeshua says, not one jot or tittle of the law shall talk, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, cast in stone. All the other laws are laws that human beings have written down, some with a level of inspiration by Father, some without an inspiration by Father. They are not anywhere near in the same caliber or class as the Ten Commandments. I hope that makes a lot of sense. And then law equals Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the so-called Pentateuch, cited as the law or the Torah. Yehudai Jewish tradition has it that the first five books of the Bible were written by Moshe, Moses, and dictated by Yah before Moshe died, therefore foretelling what was still to happen after Moshe died to a point. This is false. 
false. These are simply five sets of texts recorded by human beings early in the history of the Israelite people. There's a fairly widespread adoption of this view that the Torah has special religious significance and should be held in particular high esteem to the point of Torah keepers, Torah worshippers, etc. Fundamentally, like any form of book worship, this is idolatry and mistaken. This is part of what Yeshua spoke against. Yisraelite means a descendant of the Hebrew patriarch Yaakov, Jacob, especially a person born or living in the ancient kingdom of Israel, Israel. Fundamentally, folks, the worship of any book, be it the Bible, be it the Torah, be it the Quran, be it the any other religious book that is at some level deified, is sin. It's idolatry. It's putting the works of a human being on a pedestal. And then devoting huge amounts of time to Bible school and Bible study and Bible church. When Yah actually wants you to have a deep personal relationship with him, put yourself in his shoes. Just think how big a snub that is. Do you genuinely think that Yah is happy with that? So that's all for today. I'll continue with this next week. I want to ask you, what is the state of your relationship with the Almighty Creator? I'd like to ask you to critically examine where you are relative to Him today. Do you talk to Him constantly throughout the day and allow Him to lead you in every possible way? Are you conscious of him at all times? Do you worship him at every opportunity? Do you count him your friend? Have you clearly and unambiguously heard him call you friend? If not, you're failing in your life purpose and you will be bitterly disappointed when you die. I can't stress this enough, folks. The only reason I'm here, the only reason you're here, the only reason that whatever it is, seven point something billion people on the planet today are here, is because Yah wanted friends, intelligent people with the ability to engage him in deep conversation, to experiment with him, to create with him. If you are not in that place and doing that thing, which my information is that you're not because there are only a handful as in a few, as in maybe two or three people actually really, really doing that. There's some that are aspiring to do that, and they're well on the way in some cases. The rest, oblivious. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're a Satanist or a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or a whatever, Father Yah wants you to be his friend. Turn to him and say, Father, take me by the hand and lead me. I want to become your friend. In closing, thank you for listening. Please send me your questions to james at endtimeissueministries.org. Please email me to join the mailing list also at james at endtimeissueministries.org. If you decide to draw close to the Almighty, please let me know and I can connect with you by Skype, Zoom, Teams, email or telephone so that I can help you with your journey. I hope to connect with you again next week when I will continue to explore how to become a friend of the Creator. Work with me to make a way for Yeshua to return in victory at the end of the millennium and make his enemies his footstool. As I said a moment ago, it doesn't matter if you're African or Asian or European or Indian or American or Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or Christian or Satanist or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you've been to Bible school. He wants a deep personal relationship with you. 
Turn to him and say, Father Yah, in the name of Yeshua, James Robertson says that you want to be my friend. I choose to seek to become your friend. Take me by the hand and lead me. Bring the people you want into my life. Take the people you don't want in my life out. Open the doors you want to open. Close the doors you want to close. The prayers are all there on the website. Contact me. I'll help you. I'll coach you. I'll guide you. That's what I live for. That's my passion. Is to help people like you draw close to Father. And I have to say this. Even if you are an out-and-out -out Satanist, you can turn to him and he will cleanse you of your defilement and you can become his friend. Folks, if you've been listening to this channel for a while, you're probably going to drop off now. If this is your first or second time, please stay on. I've got something to share with you. So to those who are leaving, good night, and I'm going to move on. In closing, who am I? James Robertson. I have a doctorate in engineering and I'm a retired military commander. I now work as a management consultant. I have over 31 years experience of actively seeking to draw close to the Almighty following a dramatic encounter with him on the 12th of March 1993 when he spoke to me audibly in a locked room and I knew for certain that he was real. In learning about Father, I applied my deep-seated aversion to failure born out of an accident in early childhood, coupled to my engineering and military training of rigor in preventing failure, to my seeking of knowledge about Father. This journey led to numerous supernatural experiences, prayers answered, and clear communication with the Creator that forms the basis for what I teach in these programs. See the video, Why Seek Relationship, for an overview of what I believe. Please visit my website at www.ntimeissueministries.org. There's a lot of information there. The ETI version of the Bible with correction of key translation errors is on the ETI Bible version page. Recordings of nearly all of the teachings broadcast so far you can find on Google. Search for, quote, relationship with Creator Radio, unquote. There are about four podcast websites with the back issues on. Uh, transcripts are on the transcripts of broadcast page. There's also a broadcast page with a lot of the back issues. And if you go to the transcripts, the back issues, the, the audio files are all there. Books with teachings from 1998 to May 2019 or at the Books for Printing page. I regularly publish email articles. Email me on james at endtimeissueministries.org to be added to the list or to seek counsel or prayer or give me feedback. Visit the website and use the Google search, article keyword cloud, table of contents, and article search to locate the information you're looking for. Folks, that's it. I'm out of time. I'm going to say good night, be blessed, and I hope to see you again next week. Father, I come to you, lifting up my hands. By your grace I stand, just because you love me, I know. Hi, I'm James Robertson. I want to ask you what you understand about the Bible and if you're aware that there are major translation errors in just about every translation of the Bible. If you're not aware of this, then please listen to my broadcast on w4cy.com internet radio or talk4tv.com internet TV. Also visit my website at www dot endtimeissueministries.org or email me on james at endtimeissueministries.org to find out more. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much.